This 10th set of lecture videos is going to cover topics relating to temperature and heat. The goals for this chapter are distinguish between temperature and heat, express temperature using different scales, analyze heat transfer applications, describe the properties of conduction, convection, and radiation, analyze the specific heat capacity of a substance, solve problems involving the method of mixtures, and evaluate the change of phase of solids, liquids, and gases. The first topic we are going to look at is temperature in general. Temperature is simply a measure of the hotness or coldness of an object. In this picture, we can see a person's core body temperature when they are in rooms of different temperatures. On the left, the person is in a room that is zero degrees Celsius or the freezing point of water. You can see that their extremities, their fingers and toes, are much colder than the rest of their body. Specifically, their brain and chest or heart are much warmer than the rest of their body. As the room temperature increases, the person's body temperature increases as well. There are several different ways you can measure temperature, some more efficient and safer than others. First, you can measure temperature of something with your hands. This isn't very efficient or safe, depending on how hot or cold the material you are measuring is. You can also measure temperature with a thermometer. A thermometer uses the idea of thermal expansion, which we will discuss later. But basically, a thermometer measures the change in volume of a liquid, which nowadays typically is alcohol, as it is heated. So as it is heated, it expands and rises up the tube to indicate the temperature. Another way to measure temperature is by looking at its color. This is used when we are looking at very high temperatures. In the absence of chemical reactions, when an object is heated, it first gives off red light and then eventually white light as it is heated more and more. When we are measuring temperature, there are four different scales we could use. They are Fahrenheit, which we are most familiar with, Celsius, Kelvin, and Rankin. Kelvin and Rankin are both absolute scales. Absolute scales gives us the lowest possible limit of temperature as absolute zero. At a temperature of absolute zero, all particle movement ceases to exist. Absolute zero has never been achieved in a lab setting, but scientists have gotten very close. Looking at this picture, we see that water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius, and 373 Kelvin. Notice how Kelvin does not have a degree sign. Again, since it is an absolute scale, there are no degrees. For our purposes, we aren't going to be using Rankin at all because it is not very common. Let's take a look at how we can convert between scales. Celsius temperature is equal to 5 ninths times the quantity Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 degrees. Fahrenheit temperature is equal to 9 fifths times the Celsius temperature plus 32 degrees. Kelvin temperature is equal to Celsius temperature plus 273. Last, Rankin temperature is equal to Fahrenheit temperature plus 460 degrees. Pay close attention to where you see parentheses when you are converting between systems. Let's take a look at one temperature conversion example. There will be times when you need to use the absolute temperature scale, so this problem will show you how to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius to Kelvin. If the temperature is 97.0 degrees Fahrenheit, what is this in Celsius and what is this in Kelvin? First, we will write down what we know. We know the temperature is 97.0 degrees Fahrenheit. We are trying to find the Celsius temperature and also the Kelvin temperature. The basic equation we will use first is that the Celsius temperature is equal to 5 ninths times the quantity Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 degrees. The other basic equation we need is that the Kelvin temperature equals the Celsius temperature plus 273. Next, we can substitute to find the Celsius temperature. We have 5 ninths times the quantity 97.0 degrees minus 32 degrees. This gives us a Celsius temperature of 36.1 degrees Celsius. Now that we have the Celsius temperature, we can find the Kelvin temperature by taking the Celsius temperature plus 273. Substituting, we have 36.1 degrees plus 273 equals 309 Kelvin. This concludes our discussion on temperature.